Okay, I'm absolutely grateful and delighted to have our next guest on to share her amazing story. She is better known as an actress in such wonderful films as the Indiana Jones films and Star Man and many others. She is also a fabulous knitwear artist and has a beautiful store at 8 Railroad Street in Great Barrington, Massachusetts in the beautiful Berkshires. The phone number to the store, if you, in case you wish to visit the store, is 413-528-8555. That's 413-528-8555. Uh, and there's a, she has a website, and the website is www.karenallen-fiberarts.com. That's www.karenallen-fiberarts.com. Um, as our guest today, instead of talking about her films or her knitwear, she is going to share her incredible story of her struggle with Lyme disease. So I'm so happy that she's doing this. My son also had, had that problem, so uh, she's been helpful to him too. So uh, without any further ado, I'd like to welcome Karen Allen. Thank you, Karen, for joining us. And uh, really, it's wonderful to have you on. Oh, thanks so much, Fia. I'm, I'm so delighted to be on. And... Uh, Delighted to talk about this because it really has become, um, you know, a center of, of, of a part of my life in which I've tried to help a lot of other people recover from Lyme disease um, who I have met and who have come to me through friends of friends who have, have heard that, that I was so ill with this disease and was able to recover from it by using a very um, um, unorthodox but quite amazing um, method. And um, I struggled for years with this disease and really only kind of got worse and worse and worse over about a period of two years um, and really came to a point where I, I really wasn't sure I was ever going to get my life back. I was so um, ill and, and, and really debilitated by, by the disease and the progression of it. Um, so uh, it's, I'll, I'll just start by... by um, telling you, it was in, in the spring of 2003, I was up in the countryside. I was living in New York City, but I, I have a home in, the, in western Massachusetts, and I had come up for Memorial Day weekend and took a hike in the woods behind my house and went a little bit off trail and was with some friends, and we were kind of foraging around. And um, two or three days later, I noticed on my arm a what looked like a big bruise. It looked like I had run into something. It was maybe three or four inches across and quite startling to look at. And at the center of it was a, a little bite. I was back in New York City at the time, and I just by coincidence had a appointment with my doctor to get a physical. And I had gone to see her, and she and I were talking, and I said, look at this. And she said, oh, my goodness, that looks like a spider bite. And I said, oh, gosh, I've never had a spider bite before. She said, oh, I don't think, you know, I don't think it's a big deal at all. And she was leaving to go away for a couple of weeks on vacation, and I went home, and about three days later, I got extremely, extremely ill. Um, I had a, a headache that just would not stop. I got a very high fever. I got, you know, it, it felt like a terrible, terrible flu, but the kind of flu I've never really had before. And I went to see her partner who was on call. He looked at me and told me I had spinal meningitis, which I thought was a strange thing to have gotten out of the blue. Um, he said it was a viral type. There was really nothing that could be done about it. He sent me home, told me to drink fluids, stay in bed, um, that it would pass the way a flu passes. Um, I went through about a week of feeling truly, truly terrible, and I came back up to the country to recuperate a little bit. And while I was here, two friends of mine saw this bite on my arm, which was still there, and the bruise around it, and said, Karen, you, you don't have spinal meningitis. This is Lyme disease. That's the bite, and everything that you're feeling are the early onset symptoms of Lyme disease. So I got back to New York City, went back to see my original doctor, and she said, you know, when I heard how sick you were from my partner, it occurred to me, ah, maybe this is Lyme disease. And 
she gave me a round of antibiotics, three weeks of antibiotics, which I took. And um, at the end of the three weeks, several friends of mine from the Berkshires um, who had had Lyme disease said, don't let her take you off antibiotics after three weeks. Make sure you stay on them for at least six weeks. Well, she wanted me to go off them at the end of three weeks. And I wasn't loving taking them, so I was persuaded to stop. Um, I took three weeks of antibiotics. I felt better. I felt fine, as a matter of fact. And about three months went by in which, I really, it was I put it in the past. It was a, an episode in the past. And then all of a sudden, one day, I got a terrible, terrible pain in the elbow of the arm where I had been bitten. And it was a radiating sort of fierce, intense, almost electrical, nervy pain that shot up and down my arm. And it was got so bad that I really couldn't bend my elbow at all, and it got so bad that I couldn't do something as simple as pick up a coffee cup or open a, a, you know, a tube of toothpaste. I couldn't even make the small movement of turning the, the, the cap on the toothpaste. And I, I was by myself up in the countryside, and I thought, oh, my God, what has happened? I thought I must have banged my my elbow on something. I, I couldn't figure out what was going on. And within a couple of days, it started in my other arm, in my left arm, the same sort of horrible radiating pain. And I went back into New York, went back to my doctor. They had no idea what this could be. And um, they, you know, took all kinds of tests and did all this sort of things. And, and finally, I said, could this still be Lyme disease? Could this be the reemergence of Lyme disease? Well, they did all kinds of testing. There were, you know, several uh, kind of, um, you know, popular Lyme disease tests. Um, I've learned, you know, at this point in my life, I've learned more about Lyme disease than anybody really wants to know. Um, I know a lot about the testing process for it and how incredibly unreliable it is and how and why it's unreliable, um, which we can talk about later if you want to know more about that, but um, at this point in, in my process, she retested me for Lyme disease. She came to a kind of, un, she was unsure, and she said um, she really didn't know how to look at the blood tests, um, and she didn't know how to move forward on her own. She was a general practitioner in New York City and in a very holistic practice, and she felt this was beyond her her, um, you know, area of expertise. So she began sending to me to what became a series of specialists. Um, I went to rheumatologists. I went to neurologists. I went to, um, oh, a number of other specialists. And I began to have uh, a series of blood tests, I think, overall in the course of the next maybe five or six months. I may have had ten blood tests. Um, done separately by different doctors, and it became more and more and more of a frustrating experience because I would walk into a doctor with, or with a, however many blood tests I had at the time, with, say, five blood tests. They would look at these blood tests, and one specialist would say to me, no, 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 you don't have Lyme disease. You couldn't possibly have Lyme disease. You had three weeks of antibiotics. You know, Lyme disease is a thing of the past. What this is is something entirely different. I was told I had lupus. I was told I had um, a, 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 a nonspecific um, autoimmune disease that they didn't even have a name for, but there was just a series of symptoms around it. I was told, you know, I had... Um, Oh, some kind of like neuromuscular uh, disease that I can't even remember the name of. And, um, and then I would walk into another specialist because I would walk out of those specialists knowing, and who were all trying to get me onto all kinds of, uh, you know, pretty serious uh, uh, medications for long periods of time. And I didn't want to take them, and I really didn't believe that these diagnoses were accurate. And I would then walk into another specialist, and he would look at the same tests these doctors had looked at, and he would tell me I had a classic case of Lyme disease. So it became an extremely frustrating experience. Um, I basically completely believed that I had a recurrence of Lyme disease. 
Um, there are a lot of doctors these days who don't believe Lyme disease can recur. They don't believe that there is such a thing as chronic Lyme disease. It's become a huge political uh, uh, argument between uh, the American Medical Association and doctors who have seen ongoing, uh, you know, many, 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 many cases of ongoing chronic Lyme disease. Um, it's become a big issue with insurance companies, but at the time I didn't know any of this. I was just trying to figure out what was wrong with me and get better. I had headaches that would not go away. I started to get um, a kind of numbness in my face that never actually went to palsy, but was always felt like it was on the verge of palsy. But I could, I could pinch parts of my face, and they were just totally numb. I had no feeling in my, in my face. I had a, a headache that was of such a, a kind. It was like no headache I'd ever had before. And there was a, a sort of sense, there's this term my grandmother used to use. She used to go, oh, you've got such bees in your bonnet. It felt like literal bees in my bonnet. I felt as though somebody had opened up my skull and poured 100 ants inside. And they, there was this constant sense of buzzing and movement inside the tissue of my actual brain. I would go into kind of fugue states where I would lose time. Um, I would just lose a connection with what was going on around me. I had periods where I would be driving on a road I'd been on a thousand times before, and I suddenly would have no idea where I was. So it was affecting me on all different kinds of levels, but mostly neurologically, somewhat nerves in my, my, always continued to have problems in both of my arms and elbows. I had at times problems in my knee joints as well. I had an incredible uh, lethargy, you know, and, and kind of an inability to focus. Um, and with this, of course, came a certain amount of depression because I felt quite helpless. And the more I spent time with people in the medical profession, the more helpless I began to feel. Um, Nobody really seemed to know how to diagnose the disease or what was wrong with me. Nobody really seemed, you know, I was getting conflicting diagnoses all over the place. And everybody just seemed really interested in pouring uh, drugs of various kinds into my system. In the end, I chose to listen to a doctor who had become one of the top Lyme specialists on the East Coast. He had an office in Connecticut and was a wonderful man. He had begun, he had discovered Lyme disease before it was even called Lyme disease. And um, he had been doing research on it for a long time, uh, going back even to when it was quite prevalent in Germany. Um, and this had been a disease that he'd gotten fascinated with because his father had had it very early on and almost died from it. Um, and he had gotten very focused on finding a cure for this disease or even finding a way to diagnose it um, and treat it. But the best treatment he could come up with was, for, for me, was antibiotics. So I was, you know, I felt a bit like a guinea pig. I was having huge amounts of antibiotics of all different kinds poured into my system. There was times when I was taking two or three different antibiotics simultaneously. We did this thing called pulsing where I would have huge amounts of antibiotics and then I would go off them and then we would pulse back onto them. Um, I, I, I felt often very ill. I felt just from the antibiotics that they were making me possibly feel more ill than I would have felt if I, if I didn't have the antibiotics. And it got to a point where I didn't know anymore what was making me sick. I just knew that I, I was very ill and um, I didn't really know what, I didn't know how to help myself. And his, his advice, which I, I respected him enormously, but I really felt that his advice was the best he had to work with at the time, he put me on things called antiprozotals, uh, which was a horrible kind of neon liquid medicine that looked like tempera paint. And the minute I would put it into my mouth, I could tell it was, it was like a toxic thing. I, I didn't want to take it, and yet, you know, he was telling me this was something he thought would help me. And all through this, I was experimenting with some alternative things. I went to, I had cranial sacral work done on me. I had acupuncture. I was taking colloidal silver. Every time I would hear anything or read anything, and I was constantly trying to research 
Lyme disease and find out as much as I could about it and what kind of alternative therapies people were using, none of these things either seemed to help. I mean, the cranial sacral work was quite comforting in a certain way, and it allowed me to really acknowledge the emotional, um, uh, just the emotions I was carrying around my fear and my uh, dread of what was happening to me. Um, I, it gave me a place where I could process that, but in terms of actually moving me out of the symptomatic part of the disease, it never felt like much was happening. Um, so we, we moved forward to this, you know, I, this continued on through almost to a period of about a year and a half, a year and three quarters, and I got to a point where I was really um, felt very compromised in how I, how, how I was able to function. And I was a single parent trying to raise a child, and, and things were feeling very frightening to me. I was then told by my doctor that he felt the next step I should take is to start IV antibiotics, which I really didn't want to do. I knew a lot of people with Lyme disease were doing this, and I knew it was the next step, but I was dreading it, and it was really going to require me to go to a hospital and have antibiotics administered to me through a needle, and, and, and he felt I would become more more and more dysfunctional while this was going on. And as, as a single parent, I really felt I wasn't able to become dysfunctional. So I said to him, I, I just need to stop. I need to stop everything. I don't want to take antibiotics right now. I'm going off the antiprozotals. I just need some time. I need to think about what to do next, and I need some time to clear this stuff out of my body and really see how I feel. So I made this decision, which I, I it felt very like a very wise decision to make. I didn't know how long I was going to be able to stick to it if if several weeks went by and, and I was feeling worse or as bad as I had been feeling. So two weeks or so passed, and just out of the blue, my phone rang, and a friend of a friend said to me, I've heard that you have really, really bad Lyme disease, and I just want to tell you, I was in Costa Rica with two friends, we got a horrible parasite. We were all three very, very ill. We came back to Massachusetts. Our, we saw our individual doctors. They all wanted to put us on some hideous medication, flagell-like type of, of very toxic chemical medication that they didn't want to take. And they heard through the grapevine that there was a woman in Great Barrington who was a chiropractor who had this thing called a parasite zapper and that she might be able to help them. So they all three trooped over there and went through a process with her and all three of them within a matter of a day or two had no more symptoms. And this was now maybe a week or so later and they were all three feeling completely fine. They had had to take no medication at all. And while they were there, they were chatting with the chiropractor, and she said, um, I've been using this with Lyme disease with some really good success. So she was calling me to tell me this. I, I called the next morning. I went over. I spent four hours in the chiropractor's office. She showed me how to use this parasite zapper, which it's a small little box. It's a machine. It plugs in. It creates a very low-level electrical current. It has two wires that come from the box and two uh, copper hand holes, um, just little rods. You wrap them very uh, uh, with, pa with wet paper towels. You take all the metal off of your body, and you pass a low level of Electric, electricity through your body, which you don't feel. I mean, if you, if, you put, if you put complete concentration on it, if you're sitting there holding them in complete silence and all you're doing is just trying to see if you feel anything, you can feel a very, very mild uh, something. However, you know, if, if, you're, if you're, you know, reading a magazine or something, you don't even, it's like nothing is, is happening. Well, I spent four hours there. I would, the way she did it with me is we did this little cycle. I would be holding 
the rods for seven minutes, and then I would go off them for 20 minutes, hold them for seven minutes, go off them for 20 minutes, hold them for seven, going off. Then I had a little timer. Um, we did this for four hours. I left. I thought, oh, you know, well, that was a waste of time. I left feeling pretty downhearted. Um, it just didn't It seemed like four hours of nothing to me. I mean, I, I did what she asked, and... and um, I was glad that my friends had been cured of their parasites, but I, I didn't feel necessarily that this was going to be an answer for me. I went home. I fell asleep. I woke up the next day, and it was the first time in two years I hadn't had a headache. And I got up, and I began to realize that I felt dramatically different. And um, within about the next 48 hours, all of my Lyme symptoms had gone away. I called her, and she said, I want you to come back in 10 days. We're going to do another four hours just to kill any residual or any of the eggs. I did. I was back there in, in uh, 10 days. I did another four hours. And um, I've never really had a Lyme disease symptom since then, so we're talking seven years now. I, do, I bought a zapper. <laughs> I went uh, onto a website called uh, The Ultimate Zapper, and got a, a zapper of my own. It, it cost $140. I think I probably, between doctors and medications, I spent, you know, oh, I headed towards $20,000 in the two years um, on trying to get myself better. And uh, in four hours and $140, um, I was completely cured by this wonderful little machine. I, I have to say I, I, I use it often, I have used it often over the last seven years. Um, Any time I get run down and I feel, you know, in any way that anything that might even possibly feel like a Lyme disease symptom reemerging, I will do, you know, two to four hours of zapping. I often use it if I am around people who are quite ill, who have, um, you know, the flu or sore throats or whatever. Um, I'll I'll use it any time I feel like I'm getting sick, if, I, if my glands swell or I feel at all feverish. And honestly, it cures me. I, I haven't been sick for six years. Um, I don't get colds. I don't get the flu. I don't seem to get anything. Um, the, the way that this works is twofold. Um, Hulda Clark, who is the inventor of, of the Parasite Zapper, she died several years ago, but she was quite a celebrated Canadian doctor, um, quite controversial. She's written quite a few books. She, she, you know, she, she wrote a book about curing cancer. She believed that you know, she had a whole philosophy of why we get ill and how we could be doing so many more things to... Uh, help ourselves and help our immune system stay healthy and strong. But, but one of the theories of this zapper, or her main theory, is that um, we have parasites that live in our digestive system. We know they're there. They come in with the food and the, that we eat and the water that we drink. And they actually coexist within our digestive system fairly well. However, when the, when the body becomes too acidic, which, you know, a lot of the foods that we eat, certainly coffee, anything with caffeine, alcohol, um, lots of other foods that we eat can create a way too acidic um, body. Um, and, and stress is also a, a huge contributor to an acidic system. Um, and in an acidic system, these parasites in the digestive system thrive, and they multiply much more rapidly than they should to, to, be, to keep in balance in the body. And they, then as they multiply, they leave the digestive system, and they go places where they, should, excuse me, where they shouldn't be and where, when they're there, starts to compromise our body's ability to stay healthy. So they can go into the liver and the bladder and the kidneys and the bloodstream and all over the system. They can go into the heart. They can go into the brain. So um, what the zapper does is it basically kills all of the parasites in your system, gets them out, allows your immune system, which, 
you know, as, as these parasites move into other parts of the body, they're seen as, as foreign bodies. The, the body is not used to having parasites in the liver or parasites in the bladder or the kidneys. So the body begins to see these as, as foreign objects, and the immune system starts to fight them. But the immune system is fighting them constantly because they're there, and the immune system is just constantly, it's like having your, having your foot on the gas all the time. The immune system is fighting them and fighting them. It is an autoimmune response, only the autoimmune response is to parasites that shouldn't be there. So what the zapper does is it wipes the parasites out of your body entirely. The minute you eat something, they're back in the digestive system, which, you know, they're going to be anyway. But the immune system stays in this sort of optimum sort of place where it's functioning, um, you know, in, in, a, in a way that, that allows one to stay healthy. At least I'm just, you know, from my own experience and from the experience of I've probably shared the zapper now with, oh, I'm going to say 40 people. And it hasn't been with Lyme. It has not been 100% successful. There are people who have that I have spoken with, you know, where, where the Lyme was, was, you know, they'd had it for 12 years or something, and they were extremely, extremely debilitated. I wasn't there to see how I gave advice over the phone and things like that. I don't know how they administered it, but there have been some cases of people who I know bought a zapper and, and used a zapper and didn't feel it helped them at all, although most of the people who I've been in close touch with and who I've really been involved um, with, with helping them learn how to use it and stuff, have, have, have gotten completely rid of their Lyme disease um, in almost miraculous ways like, like mine. Um, so I, I think that's the, the, that's the crux of, of what I have to say, and I would just, I'd love to hear people's questions. Yes, thank you so much. That's a really incredible story. I'm going to open it up for questions right now. You can press 5 star on your phone to let me know you have a question. I know there's somebody on uh, who has a, a daughter with, a, with Lyme. Um, so if you wish, uh, please press 5 star now on the phone. Uh, what an incredible story. And what a, um, okay. Uh, hello, you're on. Um, hi, my name is Dave, and my daughter is suffering really bad with Lyme's disease. Um, actually, Alyssa, could you just say some of these symptoms that you're experiencing? Yeah. Well, too many to be here for hours. well, she has a, a lot of different uh, symptoms, such as uh, headaches that won't stop. She actually has to be in a wheelchair now because uh, her joints are hurting so bad she can't walk. Um, the the headache has been constant for like a whole year. Yeah. Uh, how how hard is it to be able to use this machine? It is so simple. It's unbelievable. I mean, it's unbelievably easy to use. And there there are there's actually you know they they I don't have there is also another little thing that you can buy that attaches to the feet, and it's supposed to be even more effective. What I have are just the two hand rods. But you can also buy this little extra thing that attaches to your feet, so you can have it in your hands and your feet simultaneously. And I've heard that that's particularly um, effective. But it's it's a very very simple thing to use. Um, I, I you know I don't if you heard the whole story. I mean I use it still ongoing. I was around my son who was very very ill with a strep throat the other day, and about two days afterwards I thought, oh no, my my glands were swelling up. I felt a little feverish. I went home that night and I used it for about three hours. Woke up the next morning and I've been absolutely fine ever since. I'm a I'm a true believer in the wonders of this. But in terms of Lyme disease, I mean, if 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 I can help anybody with Lyme disease, I tell you, it means so much to me because I I will never forget what I went through and how frightening it was and how is she taking antibiotics? Yes, she's on antibiotics. We've already had a pick line in for one time for a month, but it didn't help. I've had her at Columbia Presbyterian Hospital. I've had her over at Robert Woods Specialized Children's Hospital. Um, her knees are hurting her tremendously, as well as the other joints. She's had a headache for a continual, for a year now, that just has not stopped. 
How old? Um, sorry. How old is she? Uh, she's only seventeen, yeah. and her whole life is stopped. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I would recommend trying this. There is absolutely nothing to lose. It, it cannot, as far as I'm aware, and as far as you know, my experience with other people, it causes absolutely no harm. There are no side effects. Uh, it's, 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 you know, was just a fantastic turning point for me um, in the progression of this disease. It just seemed to bring it to a crashing halt and reverse it, and, and I don't have any residual damage from, from this disease um, that I'm aware of, at least, you know, and, and um, you know, you can, you can go, if you want to try it, the, the one that I use, if you, just, if you just put in Parasite Zapper into the thing, so many websites come up, and there are so many different ones, and it can be a little overwhelming and confusing. So, you know, the only advice I know how to give is, is the one that I used, which if you put in the ultimate zapper, up will come a site, which is run by a man who was in a wheelchair and who, not from Lyme, but from what had been diagnosed as MS. And, and there are a lot of doctors now who are involved in Lyme disease research who actually have come to believe that MS is Lyme disease that went undiagnosed for many, many, many years. Now, I don't know, you know, I'm sure there's lots of doctors who would refute that, but there's a, there seemed to be a whole school of thought in that direction that a lot of these things we call autoimmune diseases are actually Lyme and other tick-borne diseases that have just gone undiagnosed for a long time and, and they've specialized in certain ways in different people. And so, you know, in this person it's called lupus and in this person it's called MS and in this person it's called something else. But uh, chronic fatigue and, you know, all kinds of things like that. Um, but I would, I would you know, um, I'd get a zapper as soon as possible and try it because you've got nothing to lose. And, and, uh, uh, and my, the, the only question that I would have, and you might uh, discuss this online with the man who, who, who I'm, I'm blanking on his name right now, but who runs... Is that Ken Presner? Yes. Yes, okay. So the website, uh, just, want, just for your information, the website is uh, zap.intergate. I N T E R G A T E dot C A, Can that's for Canada. So Z A P dot Intergate dot C A. That's the website and the ultimate zapper. And the man is Ken Preston. And I have a, a question for you also. I'd like to know when you had this disease, um, did you have any co uh, co infections with it that or uh, that were also caused by by the tick? Ehrlichia or babiosis. You know, I was never diagnosed as having them, but I think, you know, as, you know, I, I've, I've spent a lot of time reading about Lyme disease and other tick-borne diseases, and I think very often there are, that's the, you know, you get sometimes what's called the tick triad. Somebody's bitten and they get all three diseases, um, which can make it particularly difficult uh, you know, in terms of the medical profession, both to diagnose and to treat. Um, you know, I couldn't even really get a, a Lyme disease diagnosis out of them, even though I knew I had Lyme disease, and even though some doctors were telling me I had the classic case, other doctors were saying, absolutely not, you do not have Lyme disease. So it, it was very frustrating. Forget Ehrlichia and Baniosis, I couldn't even get them to say it was Lyme. So I, whether I had a co-infection, I don't know. But my tendency is to think that this could be equally as effective with a co-infection as well, that Ehrlichia and Babiosis are similar in nature to the spirochete of Lyme, and, and that um, if this is effective on just the Lyme itself, uh, uh, that it could also be effective with the Ehrlichia and Babiosis, but I don't have any direct experience with those diseases that I'm aware of. I mean, I'm, I could have had them and, and just not known it. It was never diagnosed. I am. Right. 
I just want to mention also that we have no direct connection or no connection at all to the ultimate zapper, no financial connection at all. There's just a personal recommendation from Karen. There's no monetary uh, involvement at all with that. No, none at all. In fact, I don't, I've never met the man or had you know, conversations with him or anything. Um, I just happened upon the site and bought one and then have recommended it to friends of mine, but I have no connection to it whatsoever. Because uh, my daughter has been diagnosed, actually, with all five. But, you know, we're going back and forth, of course, as you're saying, with all the doctors. Some say, yes, it's Lyme. Others say, no, it isn't. And yet the uh, test reports we've had done coming back from the labs uh, are definitively showing that she does have it. So yeah. it's very, very frustrating because... We're trying everything in this world to help her, and, you know, we're whatever. And a friend of ours just told us about this. Uh, I only found out in the past 15 minutes about this whole thing just now, and, you know, I have no problem trying anything. I'm just praying that it might give her some relief. But you've had this headache, and, and my daughter's had this headache for over a year. Yeah, I had a headache for, I would say, two years that would not go away. I mean, it, it was sometimes worse than other times, but it was a constant, constant headache. And I honestly used the zapper one afternoon. I left, I went home, I went to bed, and I woke up the next morning for the first time in almost two years without a headache. And it was, it was like a revelation. I, I, just, I just couldn't, I couldn't believe it. It was like the weight of the world was lifted off of the top of my head. Um, so, you know, just just on that level alone, you know, it, it was an extraordinary um, uh, turnaround for, for me. Um, if I go to the ultimatezapper.com, would I be able to find it there? Yes. Uh, just, if you just actually, if you Google the ultimate zapper, his website will come up. I don't know the actual name of the website. Fia, Fia gave right. the actual website. But, but if you just Google the ultimate zapper, his website will be the first one to come up. It's Ken well, Fresner. Oh, that, that, that would be good. I mean, now, I mean, do, do, do you happen to know if they'll at least let you try it and see if you have any success or? Um, I know I, I doubt that they will. I mean, I think, I think they're in the business of, you know, selling them. Um, and, you know, at $140 or whatever they are, um, you know, it's, 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 Compared to the, you know, the amount of money, you know, I was paying doctors and paying for the medications I was taking, um, you know, it, it seemed like a, a, a huge bargain to me. Actually, um, I'm at, looking at the time. I'm looking at the website now, which is again uh, zap.intergate.ca, and okay, there is a trial. Uh, sorry. There is a trial period. There is a trial offer for three months. That oh, that's fantastic. Yes, you try. Okay. You says, He's so convinced that it'll work, he gives you a trial period for three months. Yeah. I mean, I don't think the last time I was on the website was I pulled it up with a friend to show her this, this zapper. I don't think anywhere on his website he claims that it cures Lyme disease I, that I can remember. There may be some testimonials in the testimonials of people who've used it um, where they, they talk about Lyme, but, but I don't... Um, I don't know if, if you know if, if, if it's one of the things he says. He you know he had a very very serious form of colitis, I believe, and a very serious form of MS to such an extent that he was in a wheelchair and had stopped being able to to walk. And he's cured himself of both uh, of these autoimmune diseases with the zapper. Um, but yeah, um, I don't. Would, would you be kind enough again to? Um, I just want to write down. The uh, name of that website again. Um, sure. If that's uh, ZAP. And instead of www, it's ZAP. Zap. Dot. Intergate. I N T E R G A T E. Dot. C A. Okay, great. So, oh, because you because they're in Canada. Zap. Dot. Intergate. Dot. C A. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. That's it. No, that's great. I I really appreciate it. As I said, I. I'm just, it, it's so horrible. We go from place to place to place, and no matter what we try to do, nothing seems to help. 
But Karen, I also wanted to ask now, you were saying that you had all of these pains in your joints. What actually happened when you were using the zapper? Did the pains in the joints eventually go away? The pain in the joints went away within, I would say, 48 hours. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it was extraordinary. I mean, I had so many different symptoms, the numbness of the face. I at times felt as though I was on the verge of getting palsy. That went away. Um, I had just a kind of unbearable lethargy, you know, where I just didn't want to, you know, the idea of, like, getting out of a chair seemed insurmountable to me. Um, that went away. I began to have, within, I would say, a matter of days, I had my old energy back to do things. Um, the, the, you know, the depression sort of lifted, you know, as all these symptoms fell away, this sort of sense of, you know, just the, the weight of this disease. You know, it was, it was really a kind of, you know, one of those sort of eureka moments in my life. It was extraordinary. Um, you're describing everything that my daughter is living through. I mean, absolutely, you're describing everything that she's living through. And uh, now I've got to try to convince her to try it, though, because she's listening to everything that you guys are saying, and she's saying to me that she doesn't believe in it or want to try it. I don't know what to do to overcome that hurdle. Well, I didn't believe in it, although I did want to try it, because I was at a point where I would have tried almost anything. Um, so I certainly did not believe in it when I tried it. I just heard that somebody said it possibly could help, and I was so desperate to get better that I would have tried practically anything. So, um, you know, I, I mean, she, I, I just want to say to her, you know, she has... You're no listening to you, Karen. Huh? She's right, here with, she's right here by my side, and she's listening to you. Yeah. What's her name? Uh, this is Alyssa. Alyssa. You know, I just want to say to you, Alyssa, you know, you, you, you know I, I don't know you, but I have compassion for what you're going through, and I remember how terrible I felt and how you know, bad these symptoms felt all combined into one and how much it changed my perspective on life. And, and um, you know, I don't, I can't promise you, obviously, that this is going to help you, but if there's a chance that it will, I, you know, I, it, 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 you can put a couple of movies on television and sit with a little timer next to you and take, put this on and off, you know, hold on, all you do is hold on to little, handles, you pass this very low level of electricity through you, it kills all of these parasites in you, and you, you don't feel anything at all, and you wake up the next day possibly feeling, like I did, incredibly better, um, and then proceed to lose all your symptoms over a period of the next couple of days. So on the chance that something like that could happen to you, and I'm not, it, it, I'm not the only person that it, it's happened to. I've given my, I've loaned my zapper to numerous, we live in, I live in Massachusetts, and this disease has been just, you know, a, a horrible, horrible, um, uh, uh, you know, part of, of, of this, this part of the country. I mean, um, uh, you know, we're not that far from Lyme, Connecticut, where, where the first outbreaks of it were, were found. And um, um, it's very, very prevalent up here. I can't tell you how many people I know who have had it. Um, but, you know, I've, I, I know, you know, from my own experience that this works, and I know from the experience of a number of friends who have gone through really, really bad episodes with Lyme disease that it's helped them enormously. So all I can say is what do you have to lose except how terrible you feel? Um, and it'll it'll it it could it could be something you know that could take four hours out of your life. You 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 would need to do it again, maybe ten days later, just to kill all the eggs and stuff. But um, I think you you know it could turn your life around. Okay. Um, I appreciate it, Karen. I don't know. It's going to be a battle, but I think. Hopefully, maybe we can get her to try because we've got to try everything we can. That's the way I feel. Yeah, I mean, this is this is so simple. I mean, it's so it's so easy to use. It's so you know, I, it's so funny. I mean, I have I have come I have met numerous other people who have had resistance to doing it, and I'm always kind of 
amazed, you know. <laughs> think like, okay, I guess you have to wait till you get sicker <laughs> until you you get to a point where you're just like, you know, you'll you'll you know, like I was desperate when I tried it. So I mean, maybe people have to hit bottom, you know, with the disease. You hit this point where, you know, but I can't. I, I honestly, I can't. I can't imagine having resistance to it if 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 she's feeling anywhere near as bad as I did. Um, you know, I would. I, I I think that it's it's something you know that should be embraced with great, you know, I don't, I also, on the other side, I don't want to set you up and, and, you know, uh, uh, you know, I mean, there's a chance that it won't help because I just, I, I, I of course have no idea why it seems to work. I mean, the the only, the only people that I know of that it has not helped are people who had Lyme disease for a very, very long period of time and were literally in bed and incapable of getting out of bed and some of them could hardly speak and it had it had really done such severe neurological damage to their body that there was nothing to reverse really i mean even if you got rid of all the lyme parasites um uh, the the damage was done if so, a person tries this within 24 hours they w- they would know if they felt anything uh, I'm saying, so uh, my question to you is, if my daughter does try this and she goes to sleep and wakes up the next day, if it's going to have any effect at all, she would notice it within the within the 24 hours? Well, if she, if, if I mean, I, I can't, I don't know. I mean, I, I absolutely don't know. All I know is that was my experience, and that has been the experience of, I would say within my town where I live, I've probably given it to and even administered it to, you know, about 15 or 16 people, and it has helped all of them. I've, I've spoken with people on the phone from all over the country, and I wasn't a part of how they used it or their treatment. Some people, when you go on the website, um, there's all kinds of little, uh, you know, you should try it for a minute here and do, and then go off of it. it has all these kinds of, of things that it says about how to go about using it. And there's also some cautions about using it if you're on medication. And I, I was tr- started to say, and then somehow we got uh, sidetracked, but I would, if I were you, have a email conversation with Ken Pressner about whether or not she should go off of her antibiotics for a while before she uses it because, uh, you know, there's all these kinds of cautions about using it, um, you know, for short periods of time. I, nobody cautioned me about anything when I used it. I'd never seen Ken Presner's website when I used it. I was in a chiropractor's office, and she said, we're doing it this way, seven minutes on, 20 minutes off, seven minutes on, 20 minutes off for four hours. So. I followed her instructions, and um, those are not necessarily his instructions, but that, that's how I used it, and that's how I've taught other people to use it, and it's been very effective with Lyme disease um, by using it in that way. But, you know, I think you need to have a dialogue with him. Um, I was not on any antibiotics for uh, maybe 10 days or two weeks when I used it for the first time. And I know he has some caution on his website about using it when you're taking drugs of any kind, you know, if you're on chemotherapy or if you're taking, you know, different kinds of medication. Um, So that's a conversation that you should have with somebody who's much more well-informed than me. Um, Okay. You there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, okay. Um, is there anybody else that's on this actual um, line, uh, you know, uh, conference that could yes. possibly tell us that could possibly tell us, you know, if they've had experience um, using it and what their results were? Uh, I don't know if that's true, but we can open it up and see if there's anybody else who would like to comment or ask a question. Uh, just press five star on your phone. We are getting near the end. We do have a few minutes left, but uh, if you have a question or comment or wish to address uh, this man's uh, question, press five star on the phone, and I uh, will see that you raised your hand. Um, anybody would like to do this? 
we'll see. Um, so far, nobody right now. Uh, do you have any more questions, sir? Was there anything you want to know? Well, um, like I said, she's on a lot of different medications, and uh, I just hope, you know, as I said, I'm not going to be comfortable, of course, taking her off any medication, but if, if she could try it while being on the medication, I guess if this guy, Ken, says okay, then I would definitely consider giving it a shot. Yeah, I would I would get on his website and have a dialogue with him about what medication she's on and and see what he has to say because I'm sure, you know, he's he's somebody who, you know, has a lot more knowledge about it than I do. I'm just I'm I'm sharing, you know, my experience and the experience I've had with a number of friends who I've 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 helped. Well, I really do appreciate it. I'm just praying that we can find something to help her. Well, I, I, I really, really hope that you do. I really hope you do. It's, it's just such an awful disease, and I, and, I, and I truly, truly believe that it is very, very curable. So hang in there, and I, I wish her, I wish you just the best, Alyssa. I hope uh, you're better very, very soon. Well, she said thank you. Okay. Great. And wonderful. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. So we're uh, just about out of time. I just want to thank you again, Karen, for joining us and sharing your amazing story. Uh, you're welcome to visit her beautiful store, uh, Karen Allen Fiber Arts, at 8 Railroad Street in Great Barrington, Mass., uh, in western Massachusetts. The phone number there, uh, if you want to call, is 413-528-8555. Five five five. That's four one three five two eight eight five five five. And her website is um, www.karenallen one word hyphen fiberarts.com. That's www.karenallen-fiberarts.com. Um, so thank you again, Karen. Yeah, can I add one more thing? Sure. Uh -huh. If there were, if there was anybody, I know we ended up just talking to this one gentleman and his uh -huh. daughter. Um, but if there was anybody else out there listening who you know is really uh, in need of some advice and and was was um, you know needing to ask something about this zapper and just didn't get the opportunity, if they want to send me you know any questions or comments through. Uh, uh, or at Karen Allen Fiber Arts, I would be more than happy to respond to them online. Great. Wonderful. Good, good. Now, um, this was the third time we tried to reschedule your call because you were involved in filming a movie. Do you want to just briefly mention about the film that's coming out? Well, I have a film that's coming out. Um, well, I don't know exactly the release date now. It's called uh -huh. White Irish Drinkers, and it's, it's quite a wonderful film set in the 70s in Brooklyn. Um, about a very dysfunctional Irish family, and um, yeah. Wow, white Irish drinkers, and that's great. So, okay, well, thank you again, Karen, so much. Uh, you've been a help in this wonderful, wonderful story, and helpful to so many people. So, thanks again, and thanks. My you. pleasure. Yeah, thank you, everyone, for joining us, and feel free to join us again tomorrow evening. Uh, as we uh, host uh, celebrity and top chef Andrea Beeman, uh, same number, same conference code. Uh, that's tomorrow evening, 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, Andrea had recovered from an incurable thyroid problem uh, through uh, eating well. So please join us uh, tomorrow night. She's wonderful, uh, lively, very fun person to uh, talk to. Um, next Sunday, uh, there will be no call because of Memorial Day weekend, but we will resume our calls, uh, Sunday calls the following Sunday, as well as our Monday evening calls. So thank you all for joining us for Monday uh, for Macrobiotic Miracles free conference calls. Um, and uh, have a great afternoon. So thank you all. And thank you again, Karen. Oh, sure, Thea. Okay, Bye, have sure. a great day. All right. Hey, everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.